Christmas Eve and RC and I are going for his morning walk. So we're gonna do a true try and do a true vlogging session today. Like everyone, it's Christmas Eve and I've left a lot of things to the last minute. So one thing I have to do is go to Fred Meyer's, which is a, like a, a big chain out here that sells everything. And I usually walk there because that's what I do in Portland. I walk everywhere. I don't have a car. But everything is really close and everything's built so that you can walk. So it's about a 10 minute walk. It's just practically at the end of my street. But I have to go there because I have to pick up ingredients to make a cheesecake. And I usually make a cheesecake for a present for someone, every my friend, every year. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to make another cheesecake if I can for the family that I'll be spending thanks Thanksgiving. It's not Thanksgiving. I'm not awake yet. Christmas with. Wow, look at this. It is kind of snowing here. It's kind of like a wet snow, like it can't make up its mind. It's coming down pretty fast though. And it's still very cold here. I'm trying to make it home, but I've got to take it slow because I don't want to fall. And as you guys know, we fall very easily. Check out this house. It's got like a secret garden. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I'd love to go down there. It usually has a fence that's closed, so you can't even see that. Okay, so if this collects anymore, it just needs to get to like a quarter of an inch of snow. And it will close Portland down. Last winter we got like, well we did get like two to three inches on the, but the schools are closed for like three weeks because of it. Okay, so it is 2.30 and I am making cheesecake. And I might not be in the frame, which is fine. <laughs> okay, so I just put the oven on to 375, and I'm a little bit overwhelmed about making this cheesecake. Because tomorrow's Christmas, and I have to make two of them, and I usually have a little bit of help if it's a Christmas cheesecake, because it's kind of tiring for me to cook. I try to cook as much as I can, but it's just for some reason one of those things that's really hard for Parkinson's people to do, and it is going to be extremely hard for me to talk and cook at the same time, so I might be kind of silent um, for a little bit of time. So now I'm making the part that I ate, which is making the base, and it's just because you have to grind these grain crackers into little pieces and it just takes me forever. Usually this is definitely a part that I get help with. Sometimes I can find the um, the brand of um, grain crackers that are already like crumbled for things like this for cheesecake but I didn't find it today. Okay, here we go. You need one and a half cups. Maple's need more. 
face that I see. So I'm just going to make all of these. A quick update. I was making cheesecake for about five minutes, but I had to stop. And I had to stop because I realized I wasn't getting anywhere with the uh, graham crackers and um, doing that, and it was getting kind of overwhelming, so I just stopped. Not that I'm giving up, it's just that I realized it's going to take a whole lot of energy to make that cheesecake, and it's like energy that I don't have. It's like 3 o'clock. My next dose of med is due at 5 and I think I took a, a two o'clock dose so maybe that hasn't just kicked in yet because it's about ten minutes to three I keep looking at the clock yeah it's ten minutes to three so it's possible that my meds are just aren't working right now and they'll snap in about three o'clock let's hope but chances are I'm probably not gonna make that cheesecake today so that it's so what gets kind of frustrated about Parkinson's. It's just a collection of everyday things that you can't do. And they don't seem like a big deal, but once it's like a lot of things strung together that you can do, it kind of gets frustrating. Like I'm just cooking a cheesecake, but like I said earlier, cooking is one of the hardest things to do. So I'm going to do something else right now. I don't know what though. And look what I got yesterday in the mail. I have my, I can't see it, Kappa, Kappa Kachua powder, which is better known in the Parkinson's community as Mukupurina. I'm not really good at Sanskrit. I never was, even though I'm an Ayurvedic health practitioner. But yeah, I got this bag in. I think it's like half a pound. And it's from Banyan um, Botanicals. And it's an Ayurvedic company. And um, I've seen lots of people try this in the health forms that I look at. So I thought I would give it a try. Um, and I've seen a lot of questions on the company Banyan. And I know from an Ayurvedic um, perspective that it's one of the um, most or the most um, used um, vendor for Ayurvedic herbs. Ayurvedic herbs are, are kind of not regulated and are really hard to obtain in the U.S. But um, as far as I know, this is the only herb company in the U.S. that actually tests the herbs to make sure that there is no lead and other things. But they track that according to whatever the U.S. standards are, so I don't know what that means. The U.S. standards may not be that strict. But anyway, they do test their herbs. A lot of companies don't test the herbs. I get it from Banyan because um, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner, so I'm kind of familiar with their herbs. They only sell herbs that are used in Ayurvedic practices and they only use herbs or sell herbs that are sustainable, meaning that, especially with something like Ayurvedic medicine or Chinese medicine, they use a lot of herbs, but um, a lot of the herbs can only be grown right now in certain conditions in, in China or India or someplace, um, that's someplace else that's real warm. So the plants or herbs that are grown elsewhere may not have the same medicinal properties as the original herbs. So they test all that. So I'm not endorsing this company. I have nothing to do with this company, but I do think from my perspective, being an Ayurvedic practitioner, that it is a good company to obtain um, this herb from. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on this coming up next year. It's one of my goals because, well, one, because I want to see if it works. Two, because I'm interested because it's an Ayurvedic herb. Um, so <laughs> there's lots of things that um, I can probably test that maybe someone else can't test. Like um, I already have the herb in like a tincture 
and I want to test that. I know Ayurvedically, again, this is all from an Ayurvedic perspective, that the powder is going to be a lot more powerful um, than the um, capsules. They just started selling capsules, which is mostly what um, Western medicine or people are familiar with, with, with um, participating in Western medicine. Um, most people in the West do not like these powders because they don't taste good. But from an Ayurvedic perspective, they're more powerful because they go through the digestive um, system and they're Ayurvedically more safe. But that doesn't mean that you're, that you're not going to have any side effects. And it's, it also doesn't mean that this can be used by um, everyone. So the dosage is a big thing I'm going to try out because like there's a lot of different different people talking about different doses. I've seen like one tablespoon and I'm not sure if they're talking about one tablespoon totally for the day or one tablespoon for each dose, but one tablespoon is a large amount. Ayurvedically, we would only use, like this says, half a teaspoon twice a day. So that's a pretty safe amount. Um, so I'm going to start with a small dose of this. I'm also going to run this past my, new, my neurologist because my next checkup is pretty soon. It's like the first, I think it's the first third or the third week in January. So I am going to check with them and that's what you should do when you try anything like this, any kind of herb. You have to run it past your primary or your neurologist because herbs, although they're very powerful, they can interact with your Western medicine. So if you're not on Western medicine, you can kind you kind of have more freedom, although I would make sure that you're um, also consulting with someone like an Ayurvedic counselor, a doctor, um, or like if you're going through like the Chinese system, a, a Chinese doctor, a naturopath, an acupuncturist. So it's kind of risky when you're just doing these herbs by yourself, but it's definitely a little less risky if you're not on any medication right now or not taking other su supplements. When you're taking other things, then it gets a lot more complicated. So if you're taking other things, if you're taking cinnamon right now or, or any other variation of the medication that they give us, then I would not, um, you know, I would not just test this. I would make sure to check with my um, doctor first. But we both know that the neurologist and the primary care I'm not so sure they're going to want you to try this. Or, well, you know, probably they're not going to know too much. This is like an herb that's used in Ayurveda. There's not many doctors that know too much about Ayurvedic medicine. They might not even know anything about it or have heard that there's other types of medicine. So probably they're not going to recommend it. But at least you kind of got their thoughts on it before you do something yourself. So that's all I'm going to say right now. I've got a lot more to um, talk about because I'm going to try this in water. I'm also going to try it in ghee, which is clarified butter, which we use a lot Ayurvedically. Um, I have um, books that also suggest that you use it in um, milk and honey so that it's more uh, nurturing to the body. Um, but again, these are this is something that's used in the Ayurvedic um, medicine. So I'm going to tell you things to do more on an Ayurvedic perspective. But yeah, I will be testing this and it might take me a while um, to do that. So that's just what I'm up to and yeah, I was pretty excited I got my um, herb today. But like I said, I've had the tincture for quite a while. The only thing I don't like about the tincture, and the tincture is like the herb and alcohol, but I don't know how much of the active ingredient, which is the levodopa, I don't know how much is in that, but I could probably calculate that for you or ask someone. Um, so the only thing I don't like about the extract is that I think I'm going to go through 
too much of it so it's not going to be really cost effective for me although to be honest I could make my own tincture they're not really that hard to make maybe that's something down the line or rather down the road that I can make in a video but the powder is really cheap or inexpensive um, so anytime you get like powdered herbs and a lot of the Chinese and the um, Ayurvedic herbs, Ayurveda is based in India, the herbs really aren't aren't that much money. I mean some can be of course costly but compared to Western medicine they're a lot cheaper. Like this bag is gonna last me a long long time and that's only half a pound and you can get up to a pound of it. Um, so anyway, I'm rambling now, so I am going to sign up, sign off for today on that.